you and welcome to your beautiful day. I am Jen, the mother of gratitude. Thank you for tuning in and we appreciate you spending time with us, finding gratitude in your day and your life. And with me is our gratitude goddess, special guest, Pearl Sharenza. Good morning. How is everybody out there today? Your last name. I love your last name. You I did just, such a great job on it. Sharenza. Sharenza. It was better than my maiden name. My maiden name was Nap. It's like Nap. So N A P P. K N A P P. K N A P P. Yes, there's lots of bully stories with that name. Oh goodness. <laughs> but oh, it's all no. good. I own that name. You no, own your name. It's yeah. my name. <laughs> well, mine was Ward. So, so yep. I so, understand that yep. one. Yep. Well, yeah. So we wanted to thank you guys for today. We have a really, really special treat. I am so thankful um, to be a part of this project. I am so excited because I love music and I want to save our music and i want to be able to bring to you special guests that were behind the scenes when history was being made and i've been asked to do a documentary on someone that was the engineer for working with eric clapton on layla working with the rolling stones working with um, just pop culture history iconic interviews that we're going to be giving you through the documentary of this man's life. So we're going to be bringing on to the show Lil Barkaski, who is doing the memoirs and of a special gentleman that I'm telling you about. And Lil is also um, a, a coach, a life coach of some means. She's doing websites for me. Awesome. She has a network group called Business Impossible on Facebook. So without further ado... Welcome to the show, Lil. Hi, Lil. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Good Welcome. morning. Welcome. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. How are you? You know, tired. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard so much about you, and I know I've talked to you on the phone before, Lil. I'm so glad I finally get to see you in person. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. And I hear you've got this great place. I told I told Jen, I'm like, I'm going to hop in the back of the van one day and just take a ride. She wants to come with me. I'm like, it's <laughs> awesome out there. It's amazing. I'm all about got a little over a little over a quarter acre and uh, close to half an acre and uh, nice backyard and big, you know, small house, beautiful surroundings. That's awesome. I'm all about staycation. So whenever you can get away and local and mm -hmm. you can get, work, you know, do stuff on work and business, I think it's just awesome. This is an amazing staycation, and I thought it was like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go out. Um, Lil's doing my websites. She's my project manager for my life. I finally have one of those. And to be able just to sit and gather our thoughts together and see how we're putting together the conglomerate of um, Mother of Gratitude. So, And in doing so, I was really happy to learn that she's working on a special project. Yes, well... Yeah, it's a, a near and dear to my heart project. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, my I, I call him my brother from another mother. He's people think he is my brother. Actually, we, we we've been very close friends for quite a long time now. Actually, was friends with his wife first because she's an actress who worked with an acting troupe. I I used to run. Uh, I was the artistic director for a company called Gypsy Stage, and she came wandering in one day with one of my young actors, and we all kind of fell in love with each other. And my ex and I would do all kinds of things, and we had all kinds of plans to do things with them, and. Um, so yeah, my, my brother from another mother, Steve Boyer, uh, has been sick for a while and uh, his wife wanted me to start on his memoir. Uh, he did too. Fortunately, they've got a lot of interviews with him and I've been interviewing him some more and just got some great news that he's going to be, uh, doing a little bit better soon. The docs have got, got him on track again. So good. That's amazing news. Documentary of this whole thing. So that's what we want to put it that's, on film as well as in, in a book. So. That's awesome. I yeah. So we're going to be doing a documentary on his life and the impact of music that he's had. Can you go into, with our listeners and viewers, the history of Steve Boyer? I will get my glasses. Get your glasses <laughs> on, love. Get your glasses on. I have his I have his Nobody can see. Up, so I don't even know. And that'll be this even covers all of it. But so um, Steve fell in love with music, and you'll read it in the book, in a very interesting way. His dad was a chef in New York and a lot of problems, a problematic kind of guy. And we'd often get angry. And when he would watch his dad, the only time his dad ever smiled was when he was listening to music. And he would listen to the old music, Louis Louis Palma, uh, Louis uh, Louis Prima, and um, uh, just old blues music and jazz. And 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 he would sit there and smoke and, and listen to this music. And Steve would look at his little door, crack out his bedroom door, and watch his dad 
being this happy guy in that moment. And it just it affected him. So from the time he was about five or six or seven, he started collecting 45s instead of matchbox cars. And then it was 78s. And then he met a guy, you know, that they gave him a lot of albums from one of the, was turned out he was a record producer and lived in the same building in New York. So he grew up in Manhattan. And his mom was French and worked for the UN. Um, and there's an interesting story about that in the book as well, about how she came to come to America. So he had very interesting parents who were very, very different from one another. But he fell in love with music. And he had an uncle who helped him learn to do electronics. He had really not a lot of ability in terms of singing or playing an instrument. It wasn't really what he liked. He liked music. Mm -hmm. He liked to play. Uh, so he went to college in Canada. He started a radio station at the college and became like the guy, you know. So <laughs> What college did he go to? He did, uh, I've been in Canada. I'll have to look it up in the book. I forget the name of it because it's not one I'm familiar with. But uh, and his then girlfriend then became his wife. She moved up there. So um, his first wife. And uh, anyway, he, he, long story short, he wanted to be a musician. So uh, uh, he wanted to be a rec recording engineer. Uh, he wanted to be a record producer and an engineer so badly. And he got out of college and applied for all these. It was now it's the 80s or late 70s. Couldn't couldn't get a gig. And um, he got this great offer to pay big time money to do this job that had nothing to do with what he wanted to do. And at the same moment, two studios called him. And he went to interview one he didn't get and it was a, became a very famous studio and the other one offered him a job and it turned out they offered him a job to fix the equipment mm. and because they wanted to sell the studio so he took this job making 100 bucks a week doing nothing and the guy fell in love with him and thought he was such a great guy that he offered him to interview with a very good friend of his tony bongiovi and the name bongiovi should sound familiar yes. because tony is the cousin of bon jovi whose name is actually Bon Jovi. So Tony started, was starting at that very moment, the power station, which became oh one my of the gosh. recording studios in the world. And they had just started and they already had booked some very big bands and to go in there because they had a name for themselves, but the equipment wasn't ready. So they called Steve in and he started rebuilding and he wound up building the, the rest of Studio A. And then eventually he built all of Studio B and became the, the shit in terms of fixing the equipment. Mm hmm I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. That's you're okay. good. And then once he did that, he was started sitting in with the engineers because they needed someone to fix equipment right on the spot, right on the spot. Right. So he'd say, you know, I'll, I'll watch you, you know, I'll help you, you know, something breaks, I'll be right here. Sure, they said. And then he started to learn to be an engineer. And then he became an assistant engineer. And then he became an engineer. And then he did some producing. And wow. uh, where he became one of the best known recording. And he's five Grammys. He has several Emmys and he That's has an Oscar. Amazing. One of the uh, one of the Broadway things he did. So um, a food movie rather. So um, you know, no Tonys though. He has everything but Tony. His five the Grammys are impressive to see. Sure. So the Grammys are amazing. Yes, exactly. So yeah, we my, my 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 friend got to hold them the other day. She was all excited about that. Um, let me let me read some of this to you. So okay. So he has. Um, one of the things he did back in the, he was the assistant and associate engineer on the bridge with Billy Joel, um, Peter Gabriel. Yes. Billy Scorpion, enough is enough. He has a great story about Chaka Khan, but I can't tell you that one. No, <laughs> you have to read the book. I don't want to hear that story. Can you read the book? Destiny with Chaka Khan. Um, uh, he did uh, so, so many things you might not know much of. Sly and Robbie, you might know Latin Quarter, um, April Wine, Herbie Hancock. Herbie Perfect. Hancock. Baby Snow, something real. Uh, Jody Bongiovi, the cousin, she actually did some uh, thing he worked with her. I've met her a few times. Uh, Billy Squire, uh, Creatures of Habit. Uh, again, Shaka Khan, he was the engineer. Now he's all all from like the eight, 89 or so, he's the engineer and producer from there on in. He did some assistant engineering because he had a partner for a while. And that that just didn't work out quite. But um, so, yeah, he's uh, throwing, throwing muses, Gary Buton, Shaka Khan, uh, Jenny Muldaur, throwing muses, a bunch of stuff with them. Uh, just it goes on on meatloaf, uh, he, uh, bat, bat out of hell, uh, back into hell. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I, we recorded in, uh, the, 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 we, my band used to record in the house of music in New Jersey and uh, the original bat out of hell was recorded there with that in the same engineer. So this, the, then they moved over to him, I guess is what happened. <laughs> um, so let me think. So what was his so, Oscar for? Those are all great, but what he's most famous for Billy Joel, obviously a bunch of stuff, but what he's most famous for is uh, the Eric Clapton Unplugged. So Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Right. So what yeah. happened was Eric Clapton, at that time they were doing a lot of, uh, of Unplugged stuff and Eric Clapton did an Unplugged thing and he Steve mixed it, recorded it, um, and he produced it uh, pretty much. He put it all together. 
and he sent it to the the student to the uh, record label, and they said, "No, Unplugged's kind of dying. We don't think anybody's going to use it." He was heartbroken because it was so good. Mm-hmm. And pranced for a while to just kind of cool his heels, and he got a call about three months later, and they said, "Do you still have all those tapes?" <laughs> <laughs> I still have them. And sure enough, it won Eric more than more awards than he's ever won. And yeah, it was an. Well, great... I think that's the version we all think of. We don't. Yeah, we, don't, we do. Ayla, uh, the the old one, you know, with the guitar. You know, you don't think of that as much as you think of the slow piano one. That you know, right. You know? There's something so intimate about Unplugged, and especially yeah. that was the most brilliant thing I think that they did was that whole series of Unplugged music. Right. Because and it's that just you. Know, I think you, you won five Grammys, Eric, for that one. I think yeah, that because it's it's you, it's it's the fans and the artists together. Right. And that's you know it's like heaven and earth. It's it's that's happening at the same time. The energy, the feeding off of it, but right. it's just the rawness. Yeah, I love the go. I love things like that. There was a local um, radio station here in Tampa that um, was a country station. They brought a bunch of the country artists together, and they that's what they did. Just completely on stage it was a fundraiser, and I came out of that. I was like, that is probably the best thing I have ever been to, and I've been going to concerts since I was a kid. Well, that's how music starts. Mm-hmm. It starts with you it, yeah. and a guitar, yeah, so or yeah. you and your friends. Yeah, I know. Or yeah, and it's just it's. The simplicity, right? Yeah. So we're we, we, we're always places with him. We we used to belong to a boat club together. We decided that we would buy this boat club thing to two families. Right. And, I remember that. I remember that. Lots of fun. And one day we're sitting in a boat pulls up next to us, and I didn't know about Layla to be honest with you, because I mean, we we when we ride along in an, an Uber, we like every other song, we can say, "Oh, my brother did that one." Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> no Uber drivers never believe me; they think I'm making it up. You know? but, um, we, got, we were listening to Bon Jovi, and I said, "Oh, my brother made that." He's like, "You're making it up." Like, no. <laughs> Why the back seat? So um, but, I love but, it. Um, true stories, but, but we're sure, yes, you do one of those. What, what's that show you go in and it's like a trivia thing in the cab? You know the cab show I'm talking about, Lil? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that would be that's like really Lil cool in the back go, seat yeah. going, That's my brother, he made that music. So, are you gonna tip that? That's girl, what they're thinking. Are you gonna tip the, girl, the girls are the girls are splashing on the beach, putting you know mud on their faces and hanging out. And <laughs> how <laughs> beach do you go to? Yeah, uh, we well, we usually go out to Three Rooker Island, okay? So we take the boat out to Three Rooker, we'd, we'd dock it, you know, you know, anchor. Let everybody swim and what have you. And, and Tammy had brought some dead sea mud and she and Amanda. <laughs> mud. And uh, so we were drinking and sitting on the boat laughing. And that uh, boat pulls up alongside of us and you hear, you know, you hear, dun, 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 the intro to Layla. And he just, I won't say the curse word, but he looked at me at that so and so song. And I went, please don't tell me you did that song. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And then he tells me the whole story because he made him so mad now. <laughs> he made him famous, but at the same time, like that they were. They were so resistant. He told me the whole story on the boat, and we were like, but, uh, "He's got some great stories. He's got stories about uh, um, uh, I was, his name always got it in my head. Uh, Bill, Bob Dylan. It's a terrific Bob Dylan story. I love um, Bob Dylan. Yeah. Um, we were listening to Black Hole Sun. Uh, yes. Sun, and he explains to us like the, the things he does. Uh, Ginger Baker, the drummer from Cream, he wanted to get a great sound for Ginger, and so he opened the shaft to the elevator in the building and set the drums in front of the open shaft. And he put two imbeciles. This is awesome. So Ginger wouldn't fall in and walk, walk around the drum. So just stand there, make sure nobody goes in here. <laughs> Open the shaft up. Two guys are standing there making sure that Ginger doesn't get drunk and walk off the, off the elevator. Nobody does it. And he played, he put the recording equipment facing the elevator shaft. Mm-hmm. Drums do this thing that is just astounding. And, and Ginger was like, like, Holy crap! I've never heard my drums. Wow! That and like he's one of the greatest drummers ever lived, obviously. But um, so yeah, he has a brilliant mind for world music. For he's done a lot of producing and engineering of world music because of the UN. He went to the UN school, right. so uh, he learned a lot of world music as a child. He got there. He listened to every kind of music as a kid growing up in the UN school, which was a phenomenal advantage. And what I love about that story, it was very out of the box. Like it wasn't, you know, even no matter what he might have learned. He's like, let's just try, you know, try something and let's stretch it and be out of the box with it. And like, that's where it's experimental. Great. Yeah. Music is very experimental. And you know, Lil, I happen to have access to an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We have access to an elevator. So anytime. We'll put, a, put some drums in front of that thing. We'll put yeah. some drums in front of that thing. Yeah, man. but it was a big shed. I mean, you know, the building was up, so they had this like that long echo. echo. Of floors. Yeah, no, I just echo. got one floor. 
Brilliant, brilliant stuff. But yeah, <laughs> where you want to work? I don't know. My, 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 I just work. Put the drums in front of me. But yeah, he's 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 got a real mind for sound and drum sounds and um, mixing genres. Um, uh, he actually got wound up breaking off with his business partner at the time because he wanted to get into much more heavy, much more um, unpleasant. Uh, he actually he actually had the opportunity to work. He actually kicked Eminem out of his office in a pleasant way. But Eminem came in to, and I love Eminem, but he came in as a young guy to work with him. And he said, no, the music's too negative. And he wouldn't do anything that negative. And he doesn't regret it. I mean, you know, mm-hmm, Eminem, mm-hmm. discography to not worry about Eminem. But uh, so his partner started to get into some heavy stuff and, uh, you know, talking about killing cops and things like that kind of music. And he's like, no. no. So he put world music together, the drum beats of Africa, the drum beats of India, cool. the music that- Kid with all his friends because all his friends would come to the house and who's from India and who's from Pakistan and who's from Rizabwa, who was from right. this place and, this place. and they would all come over and he'd listen to their music and he felt such so in love with it that he would put it all together into his rhythms and that's where you hear a lot of that like Black Hole Sun he explained to me like if you listen like he does Black Hole Sun Black Hole Sun he just keeps repeating it but you don't even hear it you feel it more than you hear it right like you we'll listen to the same song we listened to um a song that adele did and he said i don't think that she, I, he said i think she wrote it i said no i don't think so so we went and we looked and sure enough bob dylan had written the song and then so we listened really? to dylan and then we listened to billy joel's version and then we listened to adele's version again then we, listened to, we found wow. like six, the kind of thing we do on an afternoon we'll listen like like we'll find something interesting and like watch documentaries about music or, that's um, awesome this is the opportunity to do that like, there's a lot of there's a documentary about uh, that he loves that um, I kind of want to emulate. That's about these uh, studio musicians. If people don't realize how many songs we listen to, we think the band was playing, but it wasn't. It was the studio musicians that lived practically in those studios from like 1970 some odd to like 1990. Right. Woman bass player that very famous. It's in all those. And she played a lot. You think it's a band? No, it's her. And it's all these drummers and all these musicians that you don't even know. And we watch that. We've watched that documentary together several times. And, uh, I'm fortunate that um, one of Tammy, his wife, uh, one of her friends was able to sit with him months and months ago and re- just get a lot of information out of him. And there's a lot of footage of him talking to her. So I'm writing the memoir between um, my my conversations on the couch with him, if you will, and um, the things I already have on tape that I can go through and listen to. Because uh, he's been he's had a bout with it lately. He's not been very well. But the doctors seem to think that he'll be up and moving again inside of a month. So he's going. Good. That's awesome. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, you need to have a conversation with him. Some of the stuff that we have access to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have a lot of footage of him all over the place. We have footage of him at the studio. They had a, a like a the the studio has been taken over by a college now. So, but they had some sort of like a reunion thing, and there's a lot of footage there, and it's him talking. And we have so many. I mean, we have pictures and pictures and pictures galore to be used for this. And Tammy's been trying to find someone, thank God for Jen and, and, and Mr. Jim Mosh. We, we really love Jim and, and the work he does. Um, thank God for those. Cause this, we had a couple of guys volunteer and then they didn't want to do it. And I think it's foolish because I can't imagine mm-hmm. that Sunday film festival and all the film festivals wouldn't be all over this. Cause well, it's not had- about the film festivals for me. It's about, no, I know it, that, but it, I know that, but it's, it's about preserving this years. man's yeah. life and, and to have this legacy. When we talk about what is your legacy and what is your legacy going to be in life? Um, mm-hmm. Now that we're all home sitting about sitting around going, what are we going to do with our lives? What do we want to do with our lives? And are we living what we want? No, we're not. And how do yeah. we get there? And what do we do? This is a legacy that needs to be preserved because the best part of music, you don't know when you're making history. But his life has been a part of American history. You just didn't know it. Right. It's behind the scenes. He was there. Like you're saying, people living in the studios. You don't know. You so don't let me tell know. you a story about that, that exact thing. So the first interview we went on was with uh, a, a big studio. I forget the name of the one that he didn't get. Mm-hmm. Went there. and He was dressed in a suit and tie. And he waited. And these guys come stumbling out. They've been all night working on an album. <laughs> they look at they go, you're here for the interview? He's like, yeah. They said, come back at 7 o'clock tonight and lose the suit, kid. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a kid. he's young, right? He comes back in like khaki pants and a tie and a vest. He still looks like a nerd. <laughs> and said, All right, you can come in, but don't say a damn thing. In fact, don't say a word. Just sit there quietly. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And he listened and they, you know, they never called him back for the interview, but they were working on an album of all things with Billy Joel. And he got said, Sat, now here he is, never been done this yet. And this is what he wants to do for a living. And the first interview he's got that's even worth anything, he's watching the recording engineer work with Billy Joel. And I 
Right. Ironically, those same guys, and of course, Billy Joel wound up working with him several times later. The bridge alone is. Right. That's awesome. But um, they came in to rent, rent time in the in at the power station later on. And they I were, love it. Are you that kid? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what comes around goes around, right? I mean, you never know when you're making history. I think in any mm -hmm. in any regard, I, I write a lot of books. My I'll plug my company short. Please do, it. please do, oh, well, and um, Business Impossible. Are, business Impossible Club, yeah. Please join that. It's on uh, Facebook. All, all business members are welcome. But um, my company is Long Bar Creative Solutions. We're Long and Barkaski, so it's Long Bar Creative Solutions. And we're business consultants. See, we come in and we fix stuff, you know, and, we, and that's why Business Impossible Club, because I'm an old chef. And I was a chef for years and I love Chef Irvine and, you know, Restaurant mm -hmm. Impossible. So it's never the food. It's never the, the it's never even the atmosphere. It's you. <laughs> You're screwing it. <laughs> people, right? You can always redecorate. You can always change the food, but you can't change can't the people. can't change you. So that's why Business Impossible Club. But my, one of the four companies we own under that, under that thing is Ghost, is Ghost Writers Network because I'm a ghostwriter. And I write books for people and I write, you know, all kinds of books. And uh, so Tammy, Tammy came to me and she said, we got to write his book. And I said, of course we'll write his book. And she asked me for like, if I got want to get paid, I'm like, no, ridiculous. I'm going to get paid. And that's what I, mean, what I say to you, Jen, like, yeah, like can't pay you, but you should, everyone should get something for doing the work they do. And we appreciate you. So hopefully you'll, you know, once this film is done, we'll, we'll, we'll send it to some, for Jim, especially that he's going to take his time. I think mm -hmm. hopefully for get him a little notoriety and maybe some film festivals that he did this great job. Cause I love the thing he did with you. It was wonderful. He did the toilet paper line. Yeah, it was an awesome. <laughs> I did a great job and he did it so quickly. And so, so well. fast. Right. Lil, it was like, yeah, he's was like, fast as hell. She, she sends me like, I, so I'm like, what? <laughs> I've just left the studio like yesterday with you guys just starting it. <laughs> he's a, he's a speed demon. I mean, well, no, you know, no. I, I love to see him get a little, if he's going to do this to give back. Yes. Himself. Uh, you'll get a little notoriety for the work that that's done. No, no, and that's, that's yeah. That'd so be nice. hang on, let me, we'll let me go to toilet paper lines really quick for those that don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so um, funny. You must watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the, I'm, I hail from theater. And five years ago, I went back for myself <laughs> in theater. And actually theater found me first, and then I went back into it. And Jim and I worked together um, on this play, Breaking Girl Legs. Players. Yeah, Carol with players. Care. I was the lead for Breaking Legs. I was Angie. Um, and we broke a lot of stuff on set. It was kind of funny um, because <laughs> they, they hated us because uh, glasses were flying and it was my glasses and, <laughs> and, and, and like, like wine glasses and stuff. We, were, we went method is what we did. But we've had a really great <laughs> friendship. You know, I'm a method actor, so I have to be careful. Um, but we have a great friendship. And he and I didn't know anything about this whole toilet paper hoarding thing <laughs> until one of my girlfriends calls me and says, if I want to go to the grocery store at 6 a.m. And she's a massage therapist. And she didn't get up. She didn't get up until like 9 o'clock in the morning, let's be frank. You know, <laughs> and the gym's calling me, asking me if I need anything from the store. And I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you people? You know, and I started looking into it. And I was like, are you kidding me? So he comes over with toilet paper for me. I'm like, really? And, um, you know, and it's like this major gift. And I'm like, toilet paper. Really? It's yeah. like a thing. And I went out and realized it was. And when he came over, it was like late at night. And he goes, you know what I want to do? I want to do some spoofs. I want to do this. And I go, I've already, I, I'm working on it. And literally 3.30 in the morning, we're filming in my bedroom. Because I was it, there the next day after the, it's all the leftover. <laughs> oh, my God. So it was so funny because we set my chandelier on fire. Um, I didn't know toilet paper could was so flammable. <laughs> we took the yeah. hats off of it's my paper. twelve twelve arm <laughs> chandelier. Um, we we took the shades off of them. We put the toilet paper on because that was my thing. I was writing down what I wanted to do, and I wanted to be kind of like Madonna. And I didn't have any clothing, so I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I've got like two, you know. I have no like, pajamas. No. <laughs> I have no pajamas. I'm wearing a dress. At first, it's like, okay, I'm going to look like a mummy, and I'm going to be, and then I'm like, no, I'm I, I'm not that body figure. So then we decided I need more clothing. And then we just, do I need to change the sheets? No, we're filming now. And it was very off the cuff, very in the moment, taking the Especially toilet paper so. yeah. outside while it's on fire, and then doing an entire fire scene that we never even thought we were going to be creating. Off was, of toilet paper. It was awesome. <laughs> and then Dupre came in and they were already doing the beats. So Eric had that down. He did the, uh, he, he he went to the store and did the toilet paper lines and everything. And we just shot it and put it together within a week. 
It was awesome. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah, you it's have totally to watch awesome. it. We'll make sure the link is on on yeah. in the podcast so you guys can watch yeah. it for sure. And being able, being in the moment of music, being able to open that door and hear it and writing it down is extraordinary. To have that as your entire life, as Steve has, and to be a part of such an amazing part of history, being behind the scenes, a lot of people don't see that. That's the best part of it. Um that's the part, you know, when people, when you hear the saying, no one wants to see how the sausage is made, they just want to eat it. Right. When it comes right. to music, you want to see how it's being oh, made. Oh, I love, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm not great at remembering, I have a bad memory of memory the name of the song and who sings this, whatever. But the minute it comes on, I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, you know the know, lyrics. I'm, right. I know the lyrics. I'm, I'm from the days, I'll age myself with a cassette tape, but I used to rewind it or the eight track tapes, you know. And, oh, and we all had that. that. That was so much fun. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, but I would always love, I'm the first one to sit down. And my husband is a huge music buff, and he's yeah. like, "Oh, this, you know, this documentary." I'm the first to sit down and like watch it, you know. And then I lived in Southern California, and I worked at a bank um, in Southern California. I can't remember the bank, but it was over off at Encino Boulevard. But it was where um, some of the musicians that lived in LA were. And often we would see them drive by the bank, and they would wait, you know, for outside having lunch, whatever. They would wave at us, and it was just, it was just so cool to be able to go. I live in this area where this great history is being made, and to be able to watch it and listen to it, I just think it's great and well i think it's an awesome mm -hmm. for you that you know you have the honor of you know helping yeah, and him we live share parallel his story. lives. i mean i didn't i didn't know steve when i was younger um we lived kind of parallel lives i mean he um he grew up in in in, a, in new jersey after a while they moved to new jersey and i'm from new jersey uh we know a lot of the same clubs and in, in the 80s and things we probably cross paths whether i know it or not and uh you know Isn't maybe that interesting as somewhere but but I, I, you know, um, you know, I'm a New Yorker in essence. I, I could walk into Manhattan if I had to, you know, from where I lived. And, <laughs> but I, I one guy used to drive a bicycle in every day for a nickel bag, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Borrow five dollars from everyone each day. I was Tuesday, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. he come, he get his five bucks from me because we all felt sorry for him, and he'd go get his nickel bag in the back. But he was <laughs> that closer to me, bicycle, and Steve too. That story I was telling you about, uh, he was living in New Jersey, and he didn't. Even, he was so late leaving the studio with Billy Joel that job he didn't get that he had to walk over the George Washington bridge. And um, oh, wow. there's a movie scene in there, boy, that he got to the middle of the George Washington bridge. It's three o'clock in the morning. There's no buses anymore. So he had to walk home and he was praying to get this job. This was it. Like, and he stood there, the moon was full and he stood there in the middle of the bridge and looked up and thought, if I don't get this, I'm going to die, you know, and he didn't get it because God's a funny guy and you get what you're supposed to get. And right. it out far better things were coming than he realized he had done that. He would have been, that's something to remember for the documentary. Uh, yeah, I, wait, 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 got yeah. So if he, if that wouldn't have happened while he was on the bridge, because we've all had that bridge moments in our life. Yeah, right? We've yeah, all yeah, had yeah. those yeah. moments of, if this doesn't work, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, yeah. hit, I hit a wall this week and I'm like, this has to work. Like, What's right, the song, Unanswered Prayers? I mean, really, unanswered unanswered pra yes, Unanswered Prayers. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, unanswered yeah. Prayer. And he, he was very fortunate to not to get it. So if we he would have gotten that job, what would have happened? He probably would have been gone on the same path, but not the same way. And he would have been, I think, overshadowed by other engineers for a much longer time. Like he got the opportunity to do things he wouldn't have, you know, and, and it, no, who knows? They didn't, they probably didn't have the same kind of discography that he wound up with. And he would have uh, held back. He would have been held yeah. back. Uh, he became, yeah, it is what it is. What it is. It I mean, reminds me of the story that I, I, so I other, showed, other I showed this. Oh, sorry. Lo. I share the story with a lot of the clients that I work with that, you know, we have these peaks and valleys and that when you're in the valley, you think, oh, my gosh, well, why isn't, you know, God give me this? And if this doesn't happen, then it's never going to happen. And, you know, it's just like you said, that, that unanswered prayers. You're in the valley because that's where you have to be. You're on that bridge because that's where you need to be at that very moment. Mm -hmm. And you need to embrace whatever is happening at that moment and understand it doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean it's the end, you know, and and. And to take that and recognize that and use that strength to come up the valley or across the rest of that bridge, you know, it takes a lot of strength in that and believing in the unanswered prayers. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome that he did that. Everything will be all right in the end. Yep. If it's not all right, it is not yet the end. That's right. So powerful it words. Yep. It works out. And, and, and I don't like that part because I want everything now. We're in the instant generation of everything now. Yeah. You know, we, we're old enough to know better, and that's the thing. And it's hard are, to teach kids that. I'm working up to know better. An NFL football player, 
And um, we we're working on a book uh, tentatively, tentatively called Winning the Game of Life because he was playing for the NFL. And we're, we're, I'm finishing it today, in fact. We're going to start reading it next week and finish it up. But we're writing a book for 8th, ninth, 10th graders, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th graders to uh, how to navigate the kinds of things we knew because we're, you know, we're over 50 and we're, you know, we've been through things and how not to wind up living on your mom's couch. And, uh, you know, we don't teach kids this stuff. And one of the things we're teaching is put the cell phone down for a while. Oh, you know, I've got a challenge with them in, the, in one, of the, one of the chapters, use the Pomodoro method. And Pomodoro method is uh, this guy in college used to use a little tomato timer and he, he put up, they put together an app and for 25 minutes, you do whatever you're doing. And then the thing, the thing dings and you either, if you're working, you take a five minute break or you take a 15 minute break, every choice. So we're challenging them to use the Pomodoro method to not do something, to not touch the phone, put it down. And then when the Pomodoro dings, you can either do 15 or five minutes, your choice of five or 15. And the app does that. You pick one or the other. And then you, for those five minutes, you can play on the phone. You can, you can answer email, whatever it is. But for 25 minutes, you got to do your homework or talk to your siblings or go for a walk, anything, put the phone away. So that's a challenge. And, and it's, it's, we hope that they'll do it. You know? Oh my gosh. I need that. That's an app you said. Yeah. Just look up Pomodoro method. Pomodoro like the tomato. I, so writing yeah, that down. I am definitely doing great. that. My, my ex used to do that with development because she would wind up like, sitting there in front of her computer and she would spin and spin and spin and she never took a break to stand up, take a, you know, so she, every time it ding, ding, she'd stand for five minutes, she'd go get a cup of tea or she'd get a glass of water or whatever. She'd stretch something and then sit back down, ding, and you sit back down and you kind of train yourself to not look at your phone, to do your work, to concentrate, but then to give, give yourself that moment, that break. Right. We're not giving ourselves We're breaks. Not. I love that because no. I work, I work with um, women on self-care in my life coaching that I do. I work with women on truly putting themselves first, mm -hmm. you know, and not wait 10 years down the line when, right. you know, a spouse is maybe with you, no longer with you, or your kids are all grown and look back and go, Oh, what am I going to do now? So I love that because we don't take time for ourselves and, so you can incorporate it's that. It's like in a the guilty pleasure in society. Yeah, is not taking time for ourselves because we've been the caretakers. That's why every woman is a mother of gratitude. Yeah, um, we take I'm care of everyone of else. <laughs> you are a father of gratitude. No, I love happened. that about you. <laughs> you yeah, are. I, I didn't mean. I didn't mean to be a life coach. Somehow it happened in my without by accident. I'm not really a life Lil, coach. Lil, right? the father of gratitude. Yeah. I love father that. of gratitude. Well, I've got I've got some you know young ladies and men that have come to my life that you know especially Katie. Katie came into our life when she was 15, and mm -hmm. her mom needed me to. She was a friend of. I didn't know her mom very well. I knew her. Because uh, I like Jen, I, I'm a I'm a jack of all trades, but a uh, theater and music have always been a yes. thing. I was yes. for theater at NYU, and and uh, uh, and wound up realizing I like music a little bit better, uh, much like my kid, because Katie would came in as an actress to work with us, and now she's in a band. She says that she plays the lead singer in a band now. <laughs> <laughs> she's a phenomenal actress. She just she one of the best young natural actresses I've ever met. That's and awesome. she came in to act with us and. Um, wound up living with us and because her mom had some problems and she asked if she could stay with us. I'm like, sure. And she wound up being like, and now she works for the company. She's our admin. She's a social media manager. Awesome. Um, she's, trade. she's learning to, she's learning to be a publicist at this point. Mm -hmm. because That's we're going to work in publicizing books because and we don't have one. Right. So she's a publicist. I think I'll do that. She's <laughs> really good. She's really she's good. Blogs. She's oh. writing my half of my blogs. I mean, she's just, She's my right hand, left hand, and, and center I'll hand. I'll have she, to get with her. Yeah. And yeah, I need that. Oh, so she's everybody's going to know 20, her. We're 27 this month, and um, my business partner, Cindy Long, is a brilliant graphic designer. Incredible. Yeah, she's a brilliant business coach and no, understands business at a very deep level. Yes. And she, she's our president, technically, and I'm the vice president, technically, and Katie's the admin, technically, but the three of us all sort of do everything. These are my employees. <laughs> These are my people. Yeah. And that's the These thing. You have people. to, you, yeah, you have to surround we have, we yourself with people like We that. have a staff of, like, web developers and designers mm -hmm. who do video editing and, and guys who do just about everything. And that's animation. awesome. It's something we can probably get it done, but... The three of us at the core, we hold it all down and, and uh, kind of do stuff. She's a kid's amazing. I'm very proud of her. That's awesome. I think it's great. I, my husband and I too have mentored um, a lot of, we have boys at home. So we mentored, it just ended up being young men. I've tried to mentor the young girls, but I don't know. I just, this the drama. 
<laughs> but they've you know they've come and gone in our lives and <laughs> and yeah. some have come through like one we took in underneath the foster care system um but he knew my son so they the system came to us but it's just been you know my oldest gen, you know another story mm-hmm. but my oldest is adopted at, a, at birth and so it's just been part of who our story has been about you know mentoring these young these young adults that you know these young kids i love what you said about the nfl um, story you're doing because my son played football in high school and um, I if you pass on to him the other thing if he doesn't have in his story if there's any way of incorporating it our young men need to understand that when they're playing high school football it's a job and our the challenge is our high school coaches are more into learning instead of um, grooming these young men so then when they get Correct. to college they're they're like this is a job at college and they're like well i'm on the team and i should be playing and you know so we're not we're not incorporating the grades at the same time like I, i'll tell you a fast story my son played football in high school here locally and he and he was at every practice every time and the star of the team had gotten arrested that week for armed robbery was in jail the entire week friday he comes on the field because he gets out on bail and he gets to play no. He got to play yes. on the field. Yes. Yes. Joe, yes. No. Tell no. me. Lil, that was, was a woman. Would that happen? Lil. On so many levels. That's so it's wrong. wrong on so many levels. And so imagine oh, sitting up with your kid God. and your kid doesn't get to play. Yeah. And not that he had, you know, he has to earn a spot. I don't want him to just to play because he's my kid, I, of course. But we had to sit home at three o'clock in the morning because that Friday morning when he went to school, they had told him he was playing. That kid comes on the field that evening and my kid has to stay on the bench. And I was like, yeah, and so, but that happens a lot in college, in well, high school ball. We're, we're, this book, uh, this book is aiming more at just, just being able to navigate how t- difficult high school is, and it's difficult yes. with kids. It's difficult now. It's going to be difficult twenty years from now unless we realize yep. that it doesn't work. In my opinion, it's one of the great things of the COVID virus is we're starting to realize when kids go back to school, I'm going to take a bet that at least thirty percent of them don't go back. That's mm-hmm. minimal. Yeah. Well, I've realized, you know what? We really don't need four canoes and six boats and an RV. We need somebody to take responsibility. I, I, I used to cook for two lawyers. Both of them were lawyers. And at their 18-month-old baby, they had somebody already au pairing. Because they couldn't figure out that, why don't you stay home for three hours a day? And why don't I stay home for three hours a day? Right. Watches our child. There's no reason that most people can't be working from home. Way more people are going to work from home after this. Developers. Office managers, people are realizing they don't need to be in a building somewhere. We don't yeah. need to be in a building somewhere. It cripple a lot of things. But one of those things is if you can, somebody can be home with your kid even four hours a day and we can actually trust these kids. They're having a good time learning on a computer. Yes. There's socialize. There's ways to take them out in public. But I think you're going to lose about 30% of the kids going back to school. And I think th- time, they have to go to these schools and the bullying and the having to hide under your desk. For right. I mean, it's ridiculous. So we're trying to teach people. We're trying to work with parents. Our target is mostly seventh and eighth grade students because they know that they're going to have to go to high school, maybe ninth grade. That's the big target. There's a mm-hmm. lot of that, that target market. Right. And how to like, what are, one, of the, one of the chapters is it teaches them the difference between a friend, a frenemy, an ally, you know, and That's an enemy. That's awesome. Four, those are four categories. You have people who are absolutely going to hate you the rest of your life. No matter what you do, they just they just don't like you and they're not going to work out. There are people who you align with, like your teammates, that you may never socialize with, but you got to work together. You got to do something together, right? Right. People that are like some someone, the, she who will not be mentioned, um, <laughs> who are frenemies. Like they're supposed to be your friends, but they always have that little thing, you know. Oh, oh, you, oh, that's so nice. You did. That. Oh, really? You did that? You know, they've got that freaking attitude, and they'll kind of be friendly, but you know that somewhere behind the back, they've got the knife out. Right. right? Then there's the people yeah. like Steve. And, and, you know, that, that and I have fortunate to have maybe I can count on, on more than one hand people in my life that are friends. Right. That when, when I succeed, they succeed. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. When they win, I win. You know, we, we, we celebrate. This is my team right here. Everything. We're there for each other. That's a friend. Mm-hmm. Right. So trying to teach them the difference between those things. And, uh, it's so, hard because people come cloaked. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's hard because they because want you. Even, yeah. I think that's a that's a huge lesson because one of the things all that we taught we've taught both of our boys is that, you know, your friends in high school, we we told them and our oldest came back to us like probably a year and a half after high school is over. We said, "Listen, all these friends 
that you're hanging out with in school, in a year to two years after high school, what may have been 15 might come down to 10 and then to five and then maybe three from high school that you're going to be like, if you're that lucky. was my, yeah. And, and, if you're lucky. and I gave an example for me, that literally is what had happened. I had like probably about 10 friends. I had five of them that we were really close, mm -hmm. two of them that we were very, very close. And unfortunately, like I said, you know, one I lost in an, in a, an accident and the other one, she's, she's who I left. And so about a year and a half, two years after school got out, my our oldest came back and said, wow, I didn't believe you at the time, but you're right. You know? Yeah. 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 And you know, it's, it's okay because well, the other thing we teach them is circle of influence, which mm -hmm. you know, exactly. you look at Steve, right? We're, we're back to, back to that concept. Like, so if you think about the people that Steve has in his circle of influence, it's humongous. And that's okay to have those people that you right. went to high school. Stay friendly with them on Facebook, and because one day you're going to sell insurance, and you're going to want to sell it to everybody you know, or you, or you, you know. And we, so we teach them a little bit about networking and what it means to build a circle of influence and to keep those people, you know, in a friendly place. You don't want to be mad at them or, or walk away, but you, you know, you don't have to go out with, drinking with them every week. But right. there's people you know, and they if they're if they're kind and decent people. They're going to help you learn. So we, we, you know, they're going to help you grow. So we teach them about that. We teach them like if you're going to an ally might be somebody that, you know, you work with uh, who isn't necessarily going to be a great friend. Uh, when I was young, I, I went on a sales job. I tried to sell real estate, and I I met an older woman who everybody hated, but she was the best salesman there. And first day on the job, I'm sitting in my little cubicle. She's next to me, and I'm on the phone. And she leans in. And she says. How long have you been doing this? And I looked at my watch and I said, "What time is it?" <laughs> <laughs> That's not possible. I said, yeah, I don't know. I just I'm like talking. So she taught me because she turned out to be an ally. We never went drinking. I never had a meal with her. I never even had lunch with the woman. But I sold her properties, and she taught me how to sell properties because it helped her. Right. She was she was an ally. She, she saw the gift in you and, a and brought it she out. Did. Right. Yeah. And and we teach them something. I think you'll love. Um, people, the kids are afraid to ask for help. Right. We all are. But especially young people, so teach them this. Think about it. When you get to a certain point, you want to start thinking about retiring. So we want to be your mentor because Jesus, we want you to take over. We want somebody to run the world. We want somebody to take our job. Right. I love ladies stepping into my shoes every day because in five or six years, when I'm in Italy drinking wine, I'm going to check with, with Jen. Yes, we're, gonna, we're doing that together. And one of the keys. After, yeah, after, I mean, after, that's awesome. After Aziz Ra Raouf uh, uh, Abdul, and I, Abdul Raouf, and I sell, that's his name, Aziz uh, Ra Abdul Raouf. After we sell our 100,000 copies of the book, you know, I'm, <laughs> I want Katie to take the company over. So and she's little by little, you know, if she stays on the path she's on, and she wants this company, in 10 years she'll own this company. Yeah. So and that's I, mentorship. That That's real that's mentoring. mentoring. The secret is, the secret sauce there is that kids are afraid to ask a doctor or somebody. Doctors want to believe that they can start to retire and some young doc is going to come in and do a good job and save lives. Real doctors who Take care over. about They're gonna real get, lawyers yes. who want people yeah. to do well, who want to help You know, in something like this case with the black kid that just got killed by these jackass i'm so, so sad you want lawyers to come in that they're going to take your place someday yeah. mm -hmm. you don't you're 100 because nobody good is coming behind you you want that good people will mentor you you'll find them oh absolutely to be there they they're secretly want you to take over yeah and that's kids don't realize and, and it's a great lesson to teach too because the other part of that is to like talk about being friends like i i jen knows me i mean i just give of myself so much that you know you also have to learn that you so much <laughs> you have to learn too that who are the ones that are taking advantage of you and that's or the right. probably the i didn't learn that till late in life like i really because cool, yeah we got we got that in there too i've got a whole thing about the difference between lending something and never getting it back. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Oh my right. gosh. That's like yeah. the biggest yeah. lesson you can learn in it's, life. Somebody it said, Jen, it's like you've got all these apples and you're giving all your apples away. And not only are you giving them away, you're like, okay, you're going to need this one for lunch. I got you a snack over here and here you go over there and here's your pie. And he goes, and, and you just want to make sure they're okay. Right. With all of your apples. Right. You got you to, yeah. Don't. I, my coach, don't. I, had a website, I had a website for a while. It's down right now. We're going to put it back up. It's called Lilisms. Yes. I, my, I oh, want that. Cool. I want my, that. Yeah, my side is, but my number one Lilism, I taught Jen this the other day, was save yourself, <laughs> the world will follow. So, Say that one more time. Save yourself, the world will not follow you. You've got to save yourself. Save and yourself, world. and the world will follow. Lil, I, that's I awesome. That. That's yeah, awesome, that's Lil. Awesome. We need yeah. that. 
So we're going to save Steve's uh, legacy. And yes, we are. To, I'm excited. Like I said, she just texted me right before this to say that um, he's going to, he's getting, he had an operation last week, uh, this week actually. And um, they're going to um, put in, do some rehab with him and they got, I'm going to get him back up on his pins and hopefully in a month. And, so they um, just, they just had the surgery last night. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did. They were able to get him in. He had a little problem with his back. They needed to work on and some other things. So uh, with any luck, uh, if God is good, and I usually okay, is, essentials. Um, Steve will be wandering FBC3. around up and running in a month or so. He's going to have to do a couple weeks of rehab. And then maybe maybe the COVID-19 thing will lessen enough and we'll all be able to go to his beautiful house in Tarpon Springs and sit by the pool and have him talk to us, even if it has to be with a boom mic across the pool. Right down I, will, Dr. Cheryl. I will, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I will, I will be there with my boom mics, with yes. anything that we need. You know, I've got my team with me. Um, I can bring in lighting if we need it. Any any yeah. way that you want to shoot this, we can shoot this. If we can, we will. And if not, we'll figure And it any, any way of social distancing or whatever that we need to do, I want to make sure that Steve's legacy is, um, is intact and that he's not Great leaving story. leaving us without any of it. Because a life like that, that's really well lived. When you look at that, you know, he went straight into, oh, that's Sorry. okay. He went straight into music. He knew, mm -hmm. and he went straight into music. A lot of us find it later on in life. And then when you go from the social norm of corporate life, like I've, like, you know, that I've had the thing of going from corporate life to this part of me, that's me. And, um, and this is where we're going. People make fun of you. And, and that's just, you know, you're crazy. I can't believe you're doing this, blah, 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 blah. I'm certain he had the same thing because oh, yeah. of going he into out, music. I mean, had to be like early, maybe late seventies, early eighties. He turned on like $50,000 a year, corporate car, uh, the whole bit to, to, to make a hundred dollars an hour, a hundred dollars a week fixing engineering equipment, but look where it took him. Right. You know, so, and, and that's part of the lesson of the story. Well, I came up with the title. He likes it. We're calling the book, and I suspect the, and I'd like to see the documentary be uh, mirror of that. We're calling the book "I'm All Ears." Nice. I'm he has all ears. Amazing ears. Like he can hear stuff that you just don't. I love that. I'm all ears. Babe, we're making a documentary of Steve Boyer's life, and it's going to happen. Yep, I love yep. that. I'm all ears. It's going to happen. That's awesome. That's awesome. And having a legacy. Everybody has a legacy and everybody needs to have their legacy put out there in, in a book and in a story and, of course, film. And I'm glad to see that you're doing that, Lil, and that Jen's going to be helping to empower his story. And if anybody needs yeah. a story, come to me and we can we can put it together and Lil can write about it. Yeah. Sure. We'll come on. We'll come on another time and talk about book writing. And yeah, yes. I would love to have you do that. Coaching and uh, anytime you want to talk about any kind of crazy stuff, like that, <laughs> writing, it's a lot of fun. I've got a, I'm finishing a, a fictional novel right now and, and Aziz's book. So, uh, and then of course, Steve's book. So. Awesome. And excuse me, I'm in there too. Yes, Aurora. Yeah. Aurora. Aurora. Oh, yeah, well, the script. Yeah, but book wise, I'm writing. <laughs> excuse me. I'm, writing a, a murder, I'm actually writing a book about a serial killer um, that I'm almost done with. And uh, the yeah. true story that happened, <laughs> fictionalized version of it. So wow. They're, they're Very, writing a screenplay. She's amazing. Like she's That's amazing. Awesome. So Lil's on That's my awesome. team with screenwriting and I helping me with um, the projects that I need for Aurora, putting all that together. And um, oh, if you need anything, welcome. Lil, how can they find you? How yes, can they tell us. Okay, so um, you can find us. Uh, we own four companies that are all under the roof of Long Bar Creatives. Mm -hmm. So with an S, plural, dot com. Uh, Long Bar Creatives owns a networking company called Tandry Networking. We own Ghostwriters Network, ghostwritersnetwork.com. If anybody's interested in book coaching, book editing, book publishing, we publish books, uh, hybrid publishing. So you get to keep all the royalties and we do all the work for you that you pay for us to do. Uh, beautiful book covers and graphics and all that stuff. That's Ghostwriters Network. And we own uh, GFAD Design, which is our design company. But all of those logos and all that information is all on our main hub site, which is Long Bar Creatives. Uh, Cindy Long and I put this company together about about just about a year ago now. We put mm -hmm. all of our all four of our coins in one bag, and there it is. And uh, it's it's taken off. We we do you know, full service business consultancy and figure out all your problems. I make you cry a little bit. I <laughs> made Jen cry too much yet, but no, like you have it. You made me very very happy. I have to say, <laughs> kind of <laughs> like Robert Irvine when he comes in, he makes somebody cry a little bit. I make you cry a little bit. Figure out what the heck's wrong with your company, and then we deliver all the things you need for websites mm -hmm. to write. Social media to whatever it might be, and we hold your hand all through the process. Exactly. 
Awesome. Literally. Awesome. Literally. Like, I needed someone to take me through the process. I, I am going to say that I messed up because I didn't hire her in the process, and now we're doing it right this but time. That's, a, that's powerful. But a lot of business, you, and you didn't mess up, but it's a lesson that I, a lot of business owners, when when you go to become an entrepreneur, there should be those steps to becoming an entrepreneur, and the first one should be get a coach, a business coach to help you start off on the right foot. I mean, Thank I'm you. eight years into my business and I finally got that in my head like two years ago. <laughs> I was like, hello, you know, and now- And you're a life coach. You know, you got, I, I got uh, yeah. this. I don't need a business coach. But, I am a coach. But that's a good point I, though. Every coach needs a coach. I spent a lot of money with a woman named Suzanne Evans. If you don't know who Suzanne is. I know who she is. She's awesome, awesome. We spent quite a bit of money with her. over the, over the we, you know, we did some private coaching with her. We didn't spend enough yet, I admit it, but- I, I go to a lot of her meetings and Suzanne teaches me every day myself. You know, every, every mentors have their mentors. Coaches have their mentors. Yes, exactly. I went to a driven event, uh, we're, which is going to be online. Unfortunately, we usually go to it live. Because she it's, has it in Orlando, right? We did the Orlando one. Uh, Maybe I, that's why Lil looks so familiar one last to me. Year. Uh, last year, I, sponsor, I was a sponsor at the DC one. I did a short stint as a private coach um, with, it, with a business I used to own. And then that actually launched my new business because I... I realized I needed to have my own publishing company. Yes, you do. Yes. I was vice president of a different publishing company that I didn't like working with. And mm -hmm. being see with Suzanne and learning what she uh, learned. But she's fantastic. Suzanne Evans is a crazy, wild curse. She is. I went to, um, I had a, um, a coach that I was working with at the time introduced me to her. And I went to her thing in Orlando. And I, and my person Ooh, I worked there. with didn't. <laughs> Didn't forewarn me. I think this was five years ago, Lil, that I went. I want to say it's oh, I went, we went to the last year's one. Just yeah, that's when we decided to merge the businesses because we've been giving each other business for years, and we went to Suzanne's thing, and we wound up getting so many people interested in working with us that it was like fantastic. Like, okay, so they're doing an online version of Driven this year because they're calling it Driven at Home or something because because of COVID, right? We're going to go to the Carolinas for that one, but we can't. So. Uh, but hopefully next year. But it's so much fun. It's like three days of crazy. It really is. And she is a blast. I mean, and my coach, like you said, my coach didn't forewarn me how she is. And she just looks at you and she just tells you straight up. The F word may come out of her mouth, whatever. Oh, she, yeah. she just lets you have it, right? Stop that BS. Just get out from behind. <laughs> I mean, I was like, like, yeah. That up. That up. That's not true. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, there was this big guy, big giant guy at the last one. He was blowing smoke everywhere. Where we went, we, we saw him sitting on couches talking to people. And we're like, don't listen to this guy. He's nuts. And she got up to a mic to ask a question. And she basically said, listen, the whole week, and you've been talking crap. You're full of it. Uh, just sit down. <laughs> basically, I, she laid out. A Thank you. Because somebody has to it. say that. Somebody has that. to say that. Yeah, she's she's tough as nails. But she's right. And Larry Wingett works with her a lot. Lang yeah, Larry, Larry Wingett. I, yep, I met yeah, but he's great. He's one of the best speakers I've ever heard. And he did this great thing. He had people come up and pretend cold call. He had them sit back to back. And he'd say, the ring, ring, hello. And they'd say, no, hi there. He'd say, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, my God. To teach you how to cold call. Because Suzanne believes that you should call 50 people a day. Right. Yes. She still believes it. And, I, and I've, I've got people doing that. I'm, I'm hiring people to cold call for us now. which is Yeah, really that's how my goal. That's actually, it's funny you said that. I'm working with a coach right now. She's like, you need to break down how much you want to earn and break down how many calls it needs to be. But you also need to break it down to how many new people that you need to meet on a daily basis and then take those people. And it's a whole process. Mm -hmm. It's a great process. When I went yeah. to her event, she had just, um, their little boy was just, I think, being born or a, a, it was right around that time. Yeah, so he's she, about Four or five now. Yeah, so, so yeah, and she was had lost all that weight too. She was working with oh, the it's all health coach. Yeah, <laughs> it's very, very long. Yeah, we'll edit that part out. Good. Makes she, you feel good. She I'm makes you good. no. She's uh, yeah. She's very real. She so she owns it. She owns it. She doesn't give a crap. She owns. Yes. Yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, she, she owns she, it. She, she, she. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to be skinny. You don't no, have to be perfect. No. Good at what you do. You know, and, and we're good at what we do. We write mean books and we beautiful graphics. And we great websites and we know that we're good at what we do and that's you know if you can do that but yeah her idea is so that money mountain idea of that private clients like like jen mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. her in the middle and the people at the bottom will pay you a little bit a month and right get some you, so yeah that's awesome and this yeah, is kismet. Great. This is this is a Love gratitude a moment because you guys didn't know each other before this, but mm -hmm. you know each other because you've seen each other in, yeah. in the I knew I, I knew Lil when I saw when you popped on, I was like, you look so familiar to me. So I know that that's got to be that connection with Suzanne Evans. I just look like a lot of people. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you also look like somebody. I did a podcast. Remember I told you about the girl podcasting? Mm-hmm. I did a podcast. Um, she's here in Sarasota, and I recorded a few months back. But I don't know. Do you produce podcasts? No. Mm, you look just like the girl that was working. I go on a lot of them. I Maybe podcast this- a lot because I've written several books. And I wrote a book. I wrote a self-help book for men. <laughs> I love it. We're actually going to rebuild it, the book. Uh, Katie's taking over publication. She's going to be the publicist for the book. About two years ago, I wrote a book on a dare called Why Your Women Are Leaving You For Me and How To Get Them Back. Yes, I love that book. An adulting book for 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 men. Uh, and some lesbians. I love it. It's, it's funny. It, it's just really funny stuff about, you know, I think chapter one is uh, your mother lied. You're not God's gift to the world. That's yes. <laughs> oh, you know, we talk a lot about narcissism and about. Right. Oh, so true. Right way. And, um, uh, you know, they're, you, they're your kids, too. You know, so, so, where, so where do you find that book at? Is it it's on, on Amazon? Amazon? Okay. Uh, yeah, but we're going to redo the cover and we're going to do a little bit of editing and we're going to update it in the next, like, Three or four months in case taking the Republican. I am and so excited about so that. So my book. my thing is, if you have it done before September, will you let me know? I have a retreat. Oh, way before. Yeah, oh. I just have to do a tiny bit of editing and maybe add a few things. That I, I think it would be about get it retype set with our wonderful typesetter, and Cindy's going to make it a new cover because we hate the cover. I think it'd be a cool book to to share with the women at my retreat. So we're ha- we're having a something retreat. fun. I do a women's oh, you retreat. Do a retreat. Yeah. So I, a retreat. so I do a women's retreat every year. It's a pajama retreat. Um, we have about 20 women in attendance and it's all about empowering you to be your authentic self. Exactly. Um, we have different themes. This year's theme is, um, you know, going after last year's was get over your fear. This year is, um, you know, shackle your boundaries. And so I always like to give them something fun, funny. So we get, you know, we, so I think it'd be fun to give them this book. It sounds like, and yeah, some they, of them are going it's through. A boy in their life, they need to give this. Book. I had one woman buy two for her nephew and her son. I, I was thinking I got to get some for my boys. Yeah. 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 Stuff about like, like, like not wearing too much cologne and, and wearing good clothing. Don't. Yeah. Things gotta go, you know. Right. Just, and you I know, think it'd be cool because we have women in the group that are going through divorce or, you know, those kind of things. That'd be kind of fun. Just give them a good, you know, something, you know, lighthearted. I love yeah, chapter one. It's very, very humorous. It's a humorous book, but there's a lot of there's a lot of cool lessons in it too about like yeah. a lot of life lessons getting in that. hurt. You know, don't jump in with five guys who are hurting a woman. Get the phone out and call them. Don't film it. You know, call the police. Yeah, right. So, you know, there's stuff like that and just you know, stepping up when you have to step up and Right. That's cool. It's a, it, that's a really cool book. It's funny because I'm actually using the reverse with my son. I used to be on my oldest about, you know, how to treat a woman and, and you know, yeah, don't, so you know, let them have friends, you know, don't feel like, you know, they can't have, you know, <laughs> my son always goes, my husband, you're letting mom go out to the club with her girlfriends. It's like, dude, you know, you got to uh, have trust. But now, well, he's, yeah, but now he's dating a girl that's the reverse. And so I'm having that conversation with him now going, okay, do you see this parallel here? You know, it's yeah. kind of the reverse. So helping him to That's see that. Good. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll leave you one last thought on that book. Uh, and it's controversial. I, I tell the guys, listen to me, trust me on this. There's one word a woman really wants to hear. They'll never say they want to hear it. They're going to tell you they don't, that it's sexist and it's bullshit. And okay. tell them they're pretty. Mm, I will never so say. Why, why I'm crossing my arms on that one. I will never tell a guy he can't give me a compliment. I think yeah. And so many women are like, no, that's sexist. You oh, shouldn't that's you have- know, I'm so sick bring that word back in our society. Please, if you do. want, if you can say it with sincerity and you honestly mean it, when your woman walks absolutely out of, dressed up nice and you're about to go to dinner, if you just look at her and say, "Honey, you look so pretty today," it's such an uplifter. I love that. I know it's old school, but they do. Women yeah. will lie and say they don't, but right to the core, they'll go. Pretty. Yeah, because because we want to the core. hear that to the core, uh, and we want to hear. There was a picture. Yeah. Somebody posted a picture on Facebook this morning. I saw it, um, where she is. Um, she's cooking. She's holding the baby and she's breastfeeding. And while she's doing that, her older child has got showing some ho- sort of homework. It was like a real yeah, life, that's a real in life a thing. moment picture that the husband took. And there was such backlash on it on Facebook to her. And I'm like going, I probably messaged her go, this is, do not let them get to you. This is so true what we as women are. And people need to see that, you know, you're powerful. It's look what you're doing. You're taking care of your family all at one moment, you know. Right. And, the, yeah. and then if, and the, him to tell her she's pretty in that moment when she probably doesn't feel pretty at all. 
all in that moment. Right. Could you imagine what that would do for her? I mean, you know, not that I don't think he, because he took the picture. It was a lot he said in taking the picture because he, you know, loved her enough to say, look, you're so amazing. But if, you know, we don't That's have, what beautiful is. You know, yes, that's what beautiful that is beautiful. And I think, you know, I guess it is more beautiful is important too. Like yeah. The beautiful, beautiful inside, the beautiful outside. But now and again, I think a woman gets dressed up and she means to go somewhere nice with you and she's bothered to look good. And just that word is, is much more powerful than people realize for a lot of women who, even when they fight it, even when they know it's, it's kind of, you know, macho to say the word, they still feel good when you say, I look pretty. Yeah. You know, they really do. And it's a nice thing to say now and again, if you mean it. Right. And yeah, it with sincerity. I think a lot of guys just have been trained so badly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I love my brother, Steve, uh, going back to Steve. And that's one of the reasons we're so close. And uh, we were in the pool one day with Cindy and, did something and, and uh, Steve said, you don't seem to understand. Like, we don't care. We just want you to be happy. <laughs> we don't care what color the curtains are. We don't care what, you know, what, what, whether you want to go to this vacation place or that. Are you happy? We're happy. You right. know, he's the, kind of guy. He's, yeah. the basics that's, you know, in the documentary, I want to show that because he's got a lot of tips that would help women mm-hmm. out. And, mm-hmm. and, and take the stigma off of, we have to be perfect because when you look on social media, I used to have like five layers of makeup on, apparently, <laughs> and um, and I well, you'd eyelashes. Well, you be jealous when you see his wife, though. She's, eyelashes she's so out funny. to here, and my lips should look like a duck for some reason, like Daffy Duck came in style. And for a guy to say no, I just want you to be happy. I really don't care. Well, I, I will say, I will say, the lucky bastard though. His wife is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she, I won't tell you her age, but when you see her, you won't believe her age because she's built like 25 years old and she's stunningly beautiful. Oh, know. that's awesome. awesome. Well, I'm so happy. They've, they've, been, they've been together quite a long time. How long have they been together? They've been married uh, for like... They've been together about 20 years and change. They've been married only about seven or eight because we all went to their wedding. They were together a long time and they did a they did a very ad hoc, simple wedding. We all went to Kelly's for some dinner after. and Nice. Uh, was, just a few of us. It was a very small group, but... Um, yeah, they finally like said they married, but they lived in Dunedin at the time, uh, and then they moved to Tarpon Springs. They have a beautiful home in Tarpon Springs. Yeah, One I love room Tarpon Springs. Mostly to the albums, it's an entire wall of albums. Yeah, yeah awesome. we're saving everything. Um, I, if I have to make room in my house and take over some of my garage. I'm dedicating it to Steve. Like part of my house is now dedicated to Steve. That's <laughs> awesome. We'll and uh, yeah. and anything I think that she's going to stay there regardless and uh, what happens there. But good. Yeah, he's got quite anything. Good. Anything that you need, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Awesome. I got you back up. Well, I think you're still taking up a lot of you, ladies' time. Uh, That's yeah. awesome having Multitude you. Multitude of subjects. <laughs> Multitude of subjects. Yeah. Thank you, Lil. We appreciate you, Lil Barkowski. If you need to to get any of her information, go to longbarcreatives.com. Right. Yep. It's, and if you want to email me, it's Lil L I L at longbarkcreatives.com. You can email me and uh, tell me what you need. We'll coach you through a book, or we'll get your website, or whatever the heck you need. We'll yeah, it out. completely. Awesome. All right. Cool. I have a life great. coach, was- and I have a project manager for my life, all in one. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, thank you. Lil, we love it was you. Great Lil. hanging with you. Have a great Peace weekend. Out. Have a beautiful day. Peace. Thank you, you too. So I have to say, um, I have to say, the really cool thing about Lil is I asked for, you know, I do the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Um, My version's a little bit different because it's gratitude-based. I asked for a project manager for my life. And so in my cell phone, I put Lil, and I wanted to hire Lil, and I knew I needed to figure that out, right? Right. so I just put Lil, and underneath I put everything in capital letters. <laughs> I love it. And then it's like everything in my life is like lilified. That's Because awesome. you do need a mentor. Mm-hmm. You do need someone to say, here are all your gifts. What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? And let's do it. Right. And then in a basic form that makes sense, you know, she communicates it through perfectly on how you can receive it. Yep, absolutely. And it's the most extraordinary thing that's happened. And like I said, I should have hired her before, but I didn't. And I and the greatest thing about this whole process, I know what I don't like. I don't know what I do like. You know what I mean? So I I can't 
I'm too close to my project to see it. Right. Sometimes you need somebody to look from the outside in, and it's Bam. so true. Yes, it's so true. You need that outside in. It's like, you know, I was um, working with my coach, and I've created a program that's going to be, I have it in my head, it's a 90-day program. She feels I probably should make it a, um, a six-month program. And based on the pricing, you know, it's a, it's a fair pricing. And so um, when I told her I did something with the program in, in a small group that I'm coaching right now, self-care, and I said, and Kim, you popped in my head because I knew the minute I did it, I did it wrong. And I knew my Kim would be like, what are you doing? You're looking from the outside in, you know? So you need that. You have to have somebody that's going to look from the outside in and be like, right. no, you know, you need to try it this way or that's not aligning with what you want to do, you know, so. And lovingly do it with mm -hmm. you and through it. And I'm really thankful and, and happy with where we are and where we're going. And Absolutely. What we are planning, um, especially with you and the retreats. The retreats, yeah, we and have. So we still have three spots in the retreat. So three spots you left. You can come to wsliving.com and look up retreats and grab one of the last three spots. We're so excited. We're 95% we're capacity, so. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are getting little nuggets every day for everybody. So right. I'm really psyched for what's about to happen. That's exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you being a part of our program. Check out gratituderadionetwork.com and also check out our next episodes that we have coming up with more celebrities, behind the scenes interviews of shaping our life in America. Absolutely. And having a... A, a life of gratitude. A life of gratitude. We want you. My goal is for everybody, if I could change the world, it would be I want you to go to sleep with gratitude in your heart. Wake up, look in the mirror, and say thank you. I agree. So remember, you are blessed, you are loved, you are sacred. Have a beautiful day.